Enigma, Enigma, Enigma. I couldn't tell you the precise moment and time I fell in love with words. In the seventh grade, I couldn't explain to my ghetto friends why I enjoyed being in English class so much. To this day, I couldn't tell you why 300 people stood clapping in unison at my 12th grade graduation for a speech I had written and delivered. I was just a ball player. I was just a kid riding on a cloud called dreams with an inexpensive way to express what I was feeling parallel to what I wanted to feel. I was free. Was I different? 100%. Was I misunderstood? You goddamn right. Did I feel as though no matter what I did, no one on earth could possibly understand and accept it time and time again? Did I care? Not for one Christ given second. I loved it. I relished the thought of the word only. Different, special, mysterious, complex, enigma. Today's feature is a guy I think too were all these things and didn't care for two God-given seconds what anyone else thought. Only difference, it cost him a chance of being the great player his body and life were blessed to be. Words are important, more important to some than others. PJ Carlissimo learned that the hard way when choosing the words he directed at the enigma that is Latrell Fontaine Sprewell, born September 8, 1970, the wrong way. Those choice of words combined with his dictatorial mannerism and ego led to his manhood being challenged in the form of 10 fingers clenched unyieldingly around his neck as his star player graciously tried to caress the last valuable breaths out of his yearning body. This Mortal Kombat move cost Latrell almost everything, but here's a few more things that cost him as well. It's your boy JC Stunner Growth, Ash get him man. Now Jordan, played by Spreewell, has the five, here's Michael, firing, and hits with three and two tenth seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. Figured that he would live and die with his mission of making this particular shot. Houston on him, Spreewell on him, but to no avail. Watch the little shake right there, get up on his toes. He's trying to make it nine straight to equal a franchise record and trying to make it six straight wins on the road. They are on their feet of the garden. Two-point wizard lead, three and two ten seconds remaining. Jackson gets it in. Sprewell puts the move on Jordan, and he stepped out of bounds. That's the kind of night it's been for Latrell Sprewell. Now, don't... Stunt number one, hard on my sleeve. The last thing you want to do to a man with any kind of dignity is embarrass him in front of his peers, especially a guy with the background of Sprewell. Latrell was born and raised in Milwaukee, Wisconsin to a household littered with anger and displays of negative and often aggressive energy between his parents. So much so that a young Latrell would have to live through seeing his father taken away in handcuffs to jail because of charges pressed on him by his mother and later for drug possession. A child sees everything and watches keen eye to all the examples its parents display. In one way or another, they most likely reenact those same actions and emotions. After dad was gone, Spreewell met another man in the form of mom's new boyfriend that was often aggressive as well, but this time to Latrell. This led him to moving out of the house to stay with family members and short stints with his release from jail father until being sent back. If this wasn't the perfect atmosphere and volcano buildup to an aggressive human being, then what is? Spreewell took it on the chin, for now, and went about his life. One thing I don't think even he realized that that relationship did was take his heart right from his chest and placed it firmly on his arm sleeves for anyone to access. I mean, if they dare, that is. And from there, his anger and distrust for males and especially aggressive, disrespectful ones grew into the foundation of a time bomb tornado. All that aside, Latrell would go on to play basketball in high school, but just his senior year due to all the moving around and unstable life he led thus far. He was spectacular in his lone high school season, averaging 28 points per game, but graduated without acquiring a single scholarship. He would take the JUCO route, then onto a full ride at Alabama, 
where he was all conference and displayed the ability and knack to become a special player. For this reason, the Golden State Warriors decided to take him with the 24th pick in the 1992 NBA Draft, where he came in and looked like he was up next from day one. In his rookie season, he averaged 15 points a game and was second team all-rookie. His play improved over the next five years until that one famous day, the Enigma with the now built-up tornado wearing a hard sleeve shirt did the unthinkable and put hands on his coach for words unfavorably said to him at practice. Latrell not only went on to choke Carlissimo, but came back 20 minutes later after taking a shower and catching a Mike Tyson match on TV in the locker room. He headed back out and socked PJ in the face. This led to him being suspended for one year and having his $20 million contract voided by the team. This fight was the biggest stunt of his budding career, and had it not happened, Sprewell would be talked about possibly in the same veins we talk about guys like D. Wade, Kobe Bryant, and even Michael Jordan. Not saying he was ever on any of their levels, but he would be a thought. This fight led to the stigma placed on him and an image that was just beyond repair for a league moving in a civilized direction. Stunt number two, if you can't make it here. You know what they say about New York and their beloved Knicks. It's the place former stars go to die. Or the place you redeem yourself, get back on track, and have a solid career moving forward. The Raiders of the NBA. Although most seem to lay down and rest in peace, Sprewell took the latter route and continued his all-star play. In 1999, he helped the Knicks to the finals, averaging 26 points a game in the series. Sprewell was back, seemingly, but once again, he would find himself on opposing sides with his franchise when before the 2002-2003 season, he lied about the reason he showed up with a broken hand, which his team didn't take lightly. They fined him a quarter million dollars and by season's end, decided to move on from the crowd favorite, volatile scorer, but unpredictable, now aging player. He was traded to the Minnesota Timberwolves, where he played two subpar, although serviceable seasons. This was the second time his image took a hit and his career was derailed. Stunt number three, a regrettable mistake to say the least. A man's gotta feed his family, right? Well, the trail took that a little too far when before his final season in Minnesota in contract negotiations with the team, he turned down a three-year extension worth $21 million. Feeling humiliated by the thought of taking less money than he currently was for his diminishing skills and tarnished reputation, Sprewell made those now famous and synonymous words when his name is mentioned, quote, I have a family to feed. That one line drew another line in the sand between Sprewell and his image ever recovering. Looking back at it, do you think he should have taken less money as sort of a slap in the face for his accomplishments? Was he jealous of the contract the Knicks gave Allen Houston of $99 million when it was he that really carried that team? Was he done with what he thought was disrespect and lowballing thrown his way because of the image placed partially on himself? Well, just like the enigma he is, his situation in that moment, the world will never know. Sprewell would go on to have his worst NBA season in his last year in 2004-05, where he averaged just 12 points a game in 30 minutes and shot horribly. It would be his last season due to him holding out for a bigger contract, which never came. And that was the end to what could have been a Hall of Fame career a lot of unanswered questions and confusing steps to follow. All in all, I think Latrell Sprewell's story is one of how your attitude, especially when your back is against the wall, will really determine your worth. Sprewell wasn't built to exude great attitude in these situations. Instead, he mimicked what he'd been taught and it cost him. But salute to a stellar career and great on the court legacy that will also be remembered for decades to come. It's your boy JC Stunning Growth, and I'm out.